So this, of course, has been the most expensive midterm elections, and it's also been one of the most watched elections. Millions of Americans voted in these crucial polls that could potentially define America's future for many years to come. And the big, big news, of course, right now is that the Democrats have managed to flip the closely contested Senate seat from Pennsylvania. John Fetterman, who is Pennsylvania's lieutenant governor, has defeated the Republican challenger Mehmet Oz. Now remember, Mehmet Oz, a celebrity doctor, had the backing of former President Donald Trump with this win in the key swing state of Pennsylvania. The Democrats have now boosted their chance of retaining the wafer-thin majority that they have in the Senate. Well, we got the whole family up here, but I want to tell you... I never expected that we were going to turn these red counties blue, but we did what we needed to do, and we had that conversation across every one of those counties. And tonight, that's why I'll be the next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. I'm just so proud of the race that we ran. And, you know, this campaign has always been about fighting for everyone who's ever been got knocked down that ever got back up. Now, staying on with Pennsylvania, the U.S. networks are projecting that Donald Trump acolyte Doug, Doug Mastriano has lost the governor race. 58-year-old Mastriano, who has been a 2020 election result denier, has lost to his Democrat candidate, Josh Shapiro. The retired military officer has been one of the most polarizing candidates to get the backing of the former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, this has been a bit of a surprise in New York because remember, the Democrats expected, they expected to lose the seat and the governorship in New York. But what is interesting is that the Democrat Kathy Hochul has been elected as the governor of the state. She is projected to defeat the Republican contender, Lee Zeldin. Now, Kathy Hochul has made history by becoming the first woman to be elected as the governor of New York. The Florida is witnessing a red wave. Incumbent Florida governor has in fact managed to hold on to his seat in a strong statement. Ron DeSantis said that Florida will never surrender to the woke mob. He's in fact tipped as a potential candidate for the 2024 presidential election. He's seen as a rising star of America's political right. Now, while our country flounders due to failed leadership in Washington, Florida is on the right track. I believe the survival of the American experiment requires a revival of true American principles. Florida has proved that it can be done. We fight the woke in the legislature. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. And also former President Donald Trump flew to his home state to try and energize the voters and also to root for the candidates. But the cracks are pretty evident between Donald Trump and DeSantis. In one of the rallies, Trump, of course, described Ron DeSantis as Ron De Sanctimonious. Now, in the Senate race, the incumbent Marco Rubio has made his victory speech after Val Demings conceded defeat. A former Orlando police chief, Demings was the underdog against Rubio. The Republican has successfully sought a third term in office. I am more energized and excited about working in the Senate than I've been at any other time because I believe we are on the cusp 
of a new generation of leadership in this Republican Party that will restore common sense, that will put hardworking Americans first, and that will leave for our children what they deserve to inherit, the greatest country in the history of the world. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. And Donald Trump's former White House spokesperson, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, has been elected as the governor of Arkansas. She's now become the state's first woman to serve in the top job at Arkansas. Thank you so much to the people of Arkansas who've entrusted this responsibility to me. I will be forever grateful to each of you, and I promise I won't let you down. I will never, ever forget who and what we are fighting for, because I have three little reminders, Scarlett, Huck, and George, who are going to hold me accountable and remind me that every single decision I make as governor will have a direct impact on their life and the life of every kid in Arkansas. That is not at all something I take lightly, but it is something I know I'm ready to take on. I look forward to being Arkansas's very best governor for the next eight years. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless our great state. Thank you. Thank you. And also results are in from the state of Massachusetts as well, where Democrat Maura Healy has been elected as the governor. Healy is the state's first woman and also an openly gay candidate who has been elected to the office. 51-year-old Healy flipped the seat from the Republicans after comfortably defeating her challenger, Jeff Diel. To those who voted for me, to all of you, and to all of you out there, with the help of so many, we made history, didn't we? We made history. before you tonight proud to be the first woman and the first gay person ever elected governor of Massachusetts. And as long as I'm governor, women will always have the freedom to control their own bodies and our state, our state will provide access to safe, legal abortion. We will protect women. We will protect patients and we will protect providers, Massachusetts. And also we're being joined on this broadcast by our correspondent, Calden Ong, who's joining us live from Pretoria. Now, Calden, this is a crucial election within the United States of America. How is this being viewed in South Africa? Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, just like the rest of the world, South Africa is keenly watching the news on what the final outcome of this election is going to be. Now, remember, uh, South African hasn't had a very good relationship with former President Donald Trump, considering how many policies he has blocked, how many policies he has canceled that was going to benefit Africa. Now, just to go about, uh, you know, to telling you the background of the relationship South Africa and um, uh, South Africa and the United shared that, you know, uh, since South Africa's uh, transition to democracy in 1994, South Africa and United uh, States have managed to share a strong uh, a bilateral relationship. South Africa is one of the largest uh, trade partners to U.S. in the continent. There are about approximately 600 American businesses that is, uh, that is uh, doing business in South Africa. And some of them, they even have their headquarters here. So definitely the policies going forward, what's going to happen with this election will matter. Absolutely indeed, Calden. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and getting us all those insights today. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.